Hi, I'm Mark Nyhart here with Premier Equestrian. I'm the CEO. We're demonstrating our new water wagon. This is the 500 gallon model. I want to make sure that you understand this is a brief overview of the features and functions of this unit. It's important and vital that you read and understand the owner's manual. There's all kinds of information in there that I'm not going to cover today. So please read your manual and let's get started. So in this video, we're going to cover each of the systems. We're going to talk about the motor, the pump, and the plumbing. Let's get right to the motor. This is a typical Briggs & Stratton motor. It's a three and a half horsepower. There's a couple of features you need to know. First of all, when you, before you start this up, you want to make sure the oil's full. The oil is uh, accessed by this yellow dipstick. It's pretty easy there. Gas tank here, you open that up, pour your gas in there. Most of the gas you get today has ethanol in it, and it is strongly recommended that you use a gas stabilizer. You can find that at any auto parts store. Next, we have the levers on this side. We have the throttle here, the turtle slow. Turn it this way, that's full throttle, has the rabbit on it. Below that is the choke, choke off on the right, choke on on the left. Uh, down here is a really important, this shuts your gas tank off, and when you transport this, you want this off. It's off on the left, it is on on the right. Before you start this up, make sure you turn your gas on or it won't start. The thing about this is when you're transporting this unit over rough ground, it's going to bounce. And if your gas is turned on, it's going to flood your carburetor because that float's going to be bouncing in there, pumping gas into it. So just when you transport it or when you're not using it, turn the gas off. Down here, you have your ignition switch on and off and your rope pole. One of the options for the water wagon is the pond fill and the fire hose or the, the spray hose. These come on a rack here. It's going to take them off out of the way so we can look at the pump. So on this side of the wagon, we've got the pump and the plumbing assembly. The pump's pretty easy. On the top, we have one port. This is used to fill up the pump if you need to. It's a self-priming pump, but if you need to have it a little water in there, that certainly is where you do that. Down here, you've got a thumb screw that you can take that out and that plug will come out and you can drain that pump out when you're winterizing it and those kind of things. There's two ways to fill the tank. You can remove this lid, got full access there, or you can use this three quarter inch garden hose attachment. Hook your hose up there, turn it on, walk away, this is attached to a float inside the tank. When your tank gets full, the float closes, and that valve closes, and it won't overfill. Let's talk about the plumbing. We've got four valves here, and I'm going to go into the details soon enough. This valve here brings water into the system. This valve here is used to attach the spray hose to. This valve here is the recirculation valve, and up here we've got the actual sprayer on the back, the valve for that. This recirculation valve is kind of the most important part of this whole plumbing system in that it can relieve pressure or, or, or apply pressure to your different uh, pump outputs and inputs. Basically all this does is it takes the water out of the tank and recirculates it back into the tank. And the, what that does is allows you to adjust the pressure that's coming out of any of these options. Uh, the spray valve, if you want less water spraying out the back, you turn this on. If you want more water, you turn it off. And what that does, it stops recirculating here and applies that pressure to the valve or to the sprayer or to the pond fill. So when it's on, it's low pressure. When it's off, it's full pressure. The pond fill valve basically is what that is. You take this cap off, you attach your pond fill hose, throw the end into the pond. When you start this up, you turn this valve on, which is aligned with the pump, and it's going to create a suction. 
and it's going to bring water into the tank. A great way to fill your tank. When you're done, turn it off and take that hose off. You can regulate the pressure of this hose by using the recirculation valve. When you turn this recirculation valve all the way on, it's actually moving water through that and relieves the pressure on that hose. If you turn it off, then you're going to have full pressure and you're going to fill your tank up quicker. The second valve here is the output valve. Uh, it does the exact opposite of the input valve. So you take your cap off, you attach your optional spray hose, some people call it the fire hose, start your engine, and when you turn this valve on, now the water's pumping out of that pump into this hose, and you can use it for spot watering, watering plants, those kind of things. Again, the recirculation valve is going to regulate the pressure out of here. When you turn that, re that recirculation valve all the way on, it's going to lower the pressure of this and you're going to get less water coming out because now it's just recirculating most of that water into the, in, back into the tank. When you close your recirculation valve, that it will increase the pressure on this hose, you'll get more water coming out. This valve here controls the sprinklers in the back of the unit. It is attached to a rope so you can use it from your tow vehicle. One pull turns it on, one pull turns it off. And the way that you know that it's off is are by the way these two tabs are aligned. Now it's, they're aligned across that pipe, that means it's off. When you pull it once, now they're aligned with the pipe, that means it's on. It is possible to pull this valve halfway and it won't all the way close or all the way open. So make sure when you use it, you're pulling it all the way to turn it off and all the way to turn it on. If you want less water spraying out the back, you turn this on. If you want more water, you turn it off. And on the rear of the unit, we have our spray nozzles. There's two of them. You're gonna get a spray pattern of about 10 feet. All of these motors have a safety shut off. If the oil pressure gets too low, it will automatically shut off. Obviously, don't rely on that. Make sure you check your oil, make sure it's full before you operate the engine. When you start your motor, you're gonna want this recirculation valve on. That'll take the pressure off of the pump. When your motor started and you've got your attachments hooked up, you can turn this off and get full pressure either on your sprayer your input or your water hose output. You start this motor like any other typical motor, give it a little bit of gas on the throttle, engage the choke, make sure your gas is on, and pull it. Let's talk about the bearings and greasing the bearings now. This is the uh, tire. The bearing's covered up by this little rubber thing. In here you'll see a zert. Any grease gun can work on this. When you, uh, every six months or so, put about eight squirts of grease in there. And uh, when you're storing it, make sure that that is filled up because the, in, those bearings can get a little condensation in it uh, and it can start rusting the bearing. Pretty easy to do there. Let's talk a little bit about how to winterize this. It's pretty easy. Basically, you want to drain the water out. There is a, a thumb screw on the pump. You will take that out, drain the water out of the pump. Then you need to drain the tank. There's two ways to do that. One over here with the tank drain. And then over here, you'll have the drain on the plumbing itself. So you take those two things out, drain that out. The next thing you'll do, you'll, you'll close those valves once it's all drained out. You'll take the lid off here and you'll pour in a gallon of the pink RV antifreeze. Get that in there. Everything's closed up. Start your motor. Make sure it runs a little bit. When you're running your motor, make sure that you open up your sprayers. Just get all of that pink antifreeze throughout your system.